Number 48. Concrete is pumped from a cement mixer to the place it is being laid instead of being carried in wheelbarrows. The flow rate is 200 liters per minute through a 50 meter long, 8 centimeter diameter hose, and the pressure at the pump is 8 times 10 to the 6 newtons per square meter. Letter A, calculate the resistance of the hose. All right, so the first thing is uh, when they're telling you the pressure at the pump, I believe that should be gauge pressure. Now, they don't say specifically what it is, whether it's the absolute total pressure at the pump or it is the gauge uh, pressure at the pump. If it's the gauge pressure, all right, that means that uh, the, that means, well, here, if it's, <laughs> if it's the gauge pressure, let, let's focus on this equation over here, all right? Um, Q, the flow rate is equal to the pressure differential P2 minus P1 all over R. Now, if this value is the gauge pressure, that means that the P2 value or P1, I would choose the P2 value just because it'll make your answers positive. Uh, the P2 value here will be this value and then this will be zero, okay? If this is not the gauge pressure, if this is the total absolute pressure, then this will still be P2, and then this P1 will be atmospheric pressure. So now it doesn't say which one it is. All right, so we have to make an assumption. And if you choose to choose a different set of assumptions than I am, that's fine. But notice that we'll be off, notice that we'll just have slightly different answers. So this value here, is going to, in my opinion, it's they're giving you the gauge pressure. So that being the case, then, I know that P1 is going to be zero. Because remember, gauge pressure does not take into account atmospheric pressure, so that's basically why P1 goes bye-bye. So now I wanna find resistance. So this is a simple three variable equation. Just solve this for resistance. So that's equal to P2, AKA the gauge pressure over the flow rate. And this is all we need to now do for letter A. Right, we have the variables we need. Let's just calculate it. All right, so the resistance here is going to be equal to that pressure of 8.00 times 10 to the sixth divided then by uh, the flow rate. But the flow rate, look, you know, it has liters per minute, so we got to do that conversion. So basically, this will be uh, 200, okay, multiplied then by 1 over 1000 because there's a thousand liters in one cubic meter. All right. And then uh, we have to get rid of the minutes and convert that into seconds. So it's, it's going to be one minute over 60 seconds. Okay, so this is the conversion. Now, let's calculate. So it's gonna be eight times 10 to the sixth, divided now by uh, 200, divided then by 100,000, I mean, not 100,000, 1,000 1, divided then by 60, okay? And here we go. So the, the resistance here is going to be approximately 2.4 uh, times 10 raised to the, what do we got here? So this is 3, 6, 9. Times 10 to the 9. And the units for resistance are going to be Pascal, all right, because that's the unit of pressure up here, right, Pascal. So Pascal uh, divided by then liters, uh, excuse me, uh, cubic meters per second. So just rearranging that, that'll be cubic meters, and then we can bring the seconds on up. So it's Pascal second per cubic meter. All right, so that will take care of this one. Great, now let's calculate letter B. It says, what is the viscosity of the concrete assuming the flow is laminar? So if the flow is laminar, we can use this equation over here on the right-hand side, all right? It says that the resistive forces will be equal to eight multiplied by the viscosity multiplied by the length of the of the tube all divided by pi times the radius of the tube to the fourth power. So I want to find viscosity, which is eta here. So now all I need to do is just, you know, bring these variables on up, these variables on down, and we're going to have our equation, all right? So it's basically pi r to the fourth times the resistive force all divided by eight times the length of the tube will be equal to then the viscosity, all right? Now, you just gotta make sure you have all the right units, okay? Uh, the only thing, uh, so if we go back, they told us the length of the tube in meters, but they told us the diameter, and that's in centimeters. So converting this into a radius, it would be four centimeters, right? Just dividing it by two. 
And then what you would have to do is just convert this into meters. So a centimeter on the bottom, meter on the top, right, 100 to 1. So we realize that this is 0 0.04 meters. That's the radius. And now we can plug everything in. So now here we have pi multiplied by that radius, 0 0.04. That's raised to the fourth power. Multiplied by the r value we just found, which is uh, 2.4 times 10 raised to the ninth. All divided by 8 now times the uh, length, which was 50. And that's going to equal the viscosity. So the viscosity here will be, take that value, multiply it by pi, and then 0 0.04 raised to the fourth, and then multiply it by the resistance, and then divide that now by 8 times 50. We get a value of about 48, right? 0.3, I guess, if we do three sig figs. So 48.3, 48.3. Uh, that is a pretty, pretty large uh, viscosity there, all right? But that's what it is, and the units there are Pascal second. All right, so there's the viscosity. So that takes care of that. Now letter C, it says how much power is being supplied assuming the point of use is at the same level of the pump. Okay, um, so now what we can do is, well, we can, you, you can actually use this formula if you want. It's, it's a nice, easy one. Uh, you, can, you, can basically, uh, you can basically use this, that the uh, power, okay, that the power will be equal to the gauge pressure, right, multiplied then by the flow rate. And the units will work out here, if you notice, into uh, watts. So this is a nice, easy formula to kind of remember, all right? So here we have the uh, gauge pressure, right? We assumed that it was going to be 8 times 10 to the 6th. So there's going to be 8 times 10 to the 6th. Just simply multiply that now by the flow rate. But remember, the flow rate, we got to have it in terms of cubic meters per second. We already did that conversion over here, right? So it's really 200 over uh, 60,000. Right, just combining the denominator values here. And then we can find the power. All right, so it's going to be 8 times 10 to the 6th multiplied by 20. Uh, sorry, multiplied by 200. And then divide that now by 60,000. And we get a power of about 2.67 times 10 raised to the, it looks like 4. And that's in terms of watts. All right, so that will be the power. And if you want, you know, investigate the units here and realize that they will work out to what a watt is. Okay. All right, guys. So thanks so much for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Please remember to subscribe. Until next time.